not okay with any of this. I know, it's the worst! Disclaimer, we do not own or claim ownership of the Pokemon franchise and any Pokemon established in official canon. That's all owned by Nintendo, Game Freak, and Creatures. This is just a podcast made by four friends who love Pokemon. It's our love letter to a franchise most of us grew up with. So please go support the official release. Previously on PKMN Legacy. Yeah, we're going to go to the cultist murder party. I took the cultist clothings. That way we won't be found out and possibly get destroyed. Any possibility that Velma could pretend to be a Pokemon. You create a makeshift dust tux outfit for her. Yes. The ceremony isn't going to begin just yet. You can mingle around. I hear the cult master's coming. I thought Maxine. She's one of the hate cultists. Did she recognize you? I don't know if she let me go. I'll come back with the Calvary. Name's Jaden. Mm. The guy from the very beginning. Brought a starter to the party. During your initiation ceremony, when you gotta pick someone to fight, pick me, and then I'll show you up close and personal. All new recruits gather in the pit. It's time to begin the ceremony. Plot twist, it's K Vox. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is K Vox. And I'm the leader of the cult of Nuzlocke. I swear, if it's going to be a Nurse Joy, I'm. <gasps> it's the Nurse oh Joy that God. Chris has been flirting no, with. No, 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 no. It's Dr. Joy. <laughs> Do- Dr. Oh, you're Joy. Right, you're right. Wait, guys, we get to find out if which one of us was right about who the cult of Nuzlocke uh, well, yeah. For listeners at home, they've been trying to figure out who the mysterious cultist is. The one that Velma bumped into while she was in disguise on her way to the uh, storage room. I've taken their guesses. One of them is correct. But we'll get back to that later. Wait, I'm sorry. I have Um, one last question. It's really important. Okay. For season two, do we get our fate points replenished to three when we start? Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I'm going to use my last fate point this game then. Yeah. No, no. This is... This is the do or die session. Okay, here. okay, okay, okay. Hopefully okay. not die, but you yeah. get my drift. You never know. Mm. And that, uh, that's assuming we don't switch over to a new system with season two. Sure, sure. I'll do that one shot just to test the waters. Anyway, um, as the voice of High Cultist Maxine beckons you from your relative locations, you can see that everyone around the hideout is heading to their places. Velma, you see... Four cultists, two of them being Chris and Maddie, walking from the lounge area. And you guys meet in the middle. Wait, so wait, Velma's still Velma's still disguised, right? Everyone's in their cultist disguise. Velma is not in her dust tox outfit anymore. No, but I, my outfit still has the two pigtails. Yeah, you're walking, you look across, you see two big old yellow pigtails sticking outside the hood. I just remembered the lovely friendship I made with that other cultist about my bow. And I just think I need to remind everyone of course, about not, that. <laughs> not dignifying that anyway. <laughs> so these cultists that are around Chris and I, they're just hanging around us, right? Like we can walk around. Oh yeah. Them. One of them was the sort of big brother of your little little cult scout troop. The other one seems chill too. You also remember that Jaden had already left a while ago. So he's probably already in Yeah, place. that jerk. Yeah. All right. Maddie spots Velma and she's going to casually walk over, just like whistling like Yeah, and then was just gonna casually scooch on over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she kind of just like nods at like, we gotta figure out what to do next sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Chris gives a very odd shrug and he's like, uh-huh. he didn't think we'd get this far. <laughs> Maddie's like, mm-hmm. Back. That's exactly what he's <laughs> That's exactly what he's saying. Roma kind of elbows Maddie a little bit being can I give a look of, so did you learn anything? Is there anything you saw? Oh, um, remember? Uh, wait, Kay, how many days has it been since we all met at this point? Wow, that's a good question. Okay. <laughs> so That was actually never put into perspective, was Because I know, I know time was passing kind of slow. Okay, first day one, Port Gala ended at Brayburg. Second day, gym battle ended at Brayburg. Uh, third day. I just remember you said it had been four days once we were in the cave. Yeah, Moga Bark Mills ended in Russet Town. Fourth day, ended in Russet Town. Fifth day, Mekun. Sixth day, Mekun. So, oh my God. Great, so it's been like a week. <laughs> it's been one week. Okay, so 
Maddie looks at Velma and she's like, So, surely you remember, um, when we first met last week? Um, when I came into the airport and I was chasing that guy who stole my stuff? Yeah. Yeah, well, he's here. What? And he has what? that last starter. Are you serious? I am. Oh, I never... What happened to the other one again? Just escaped? Oh, uh, no, no. So... You guys were able to rescue uh, the pirate. Right. What happened to the water one? Houndoom uh, shot a whole bunch of embers onto the trash, setting it off like a firecracker. Mm -hmm. That frightened the Poe Kitty, which made it claw at Jaden's arms. He lost grip of one of them, and it was Undertow that fell back to the ground. And where is Undertow? Yeah, Undertow was able to get back to Professor Maple's custody and assumably be given out to some trainer or something. Got it. Okay, so... Undertow is safe. It's just the Poe Kitty. Okay. That's that's what I was wondering. All right. So Maddie says, and, um, yeah, you know that Pokemon that he got away with? Yeah. He still has it. What? And he's going to use it. Uh, it's her luck. I may have, uh, challenged him when we get into the ring. Why? Why? Because Why I, would you do that? Because I need to get the Pokemon back. Hey, uh, you guys coming over oh, here? Uh, uh, yep, yep, coming, coming right through. All right, get over here. Let's open this door then. It's been stuck over. <clears throat> push. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thanks. Help me out here. Yeah. Uh, oh, ship doors. Just just give it a little push right here. Yeah. Uh, We're on a ship? I'm sorry, what? Yeah, you would have noticed this while going about, but this whole quote-unquote dungeon area is like the inside of a sandcastle reinforced with like the parts of an ancient ship. Ooh. Some wood planks here and there. Uh, the stairs are made of the uh, ship stairs. The crates and barrels. The lantern swinging about. That that would do it. Even the, like the bars on the jail cells are made of like pieces of the ship mast and the little grating on the deck of the ship. Whoa. So the big heavy door. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah it, it takes it takes a lot of muscle to even budget at all, but eventually it does grind open, and you enter this very large chamber. It's an arena, really, with you and the other cultists mulling about in the center pit, and then along the raised perimeter, about 15, 20 feet above you you see other cultists looking down at you like spectators. In front of all the cultists on the lower level, there's this huge banner hanging on this broken mast that's embedded into the, the sandy wall with this ancient-looking symbol on the banner. And then, at the very northernmost point of the upper level, in front of it all, is Maxine, looking over everything like a hawk. All right. Guess we'll just blend in with the crowd. We I can't believe we did not think to ask where we were. Well, Kay, in your best description, how far away are we from land? Or how far we've been we've been out at sea? I don't even think we're at sea, right? It's like a it's like a broken down ship. Location-wise, last place you do remember being were in the Barrier Island sandbars area. But then we got like transported. That is true. Um, you don't know exactly where you are, but behind Maxi. Uh, through these three openings between pillars of wood and sand, uh, through those openings, past the dense fog, come the scent of salty air and the sound of crashing waves. So do we still have time to just kind of like chat a little bit or are things starting like me? Doesn't seem so. Right now, all the other cultists on the pit floor are getting into rank and file. So you only have enough time to really join their ranks and find your position. Velma, you've already have your position. You're near the back corner. Okay. I see Chris. You've chosen a spot near the center, but right across from Velma. Maddie, where? Oh, do I have to like go up here? Okay, so you're going to the right side. Yeah, I'm gonna go over there, so we're a little split across. Sort of in the middle. Gotcha. All right. The other cultists find open spots. Uh, one right near Chris, and the other one further up, still near the center of the formation. And up near the front of the formation, you can see Jaden. Mm. Maddie just glares at him, but doesn't say anything. You all take your places, and you hear the doors grind shut behind you. <sighs> the murmurings and the sidebars of the cultists around you are cut off as Maxine shouts out, Everyone be quiet. We're starting now. 
It is my honor to present to you your leader and mine, Cult Master Oto. She steps to the side and through the fog in the spaces in between the pillars. Boom. 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 A man comes lumbering out. Oh. Oh my goodness. You know how I said that Professor Maple was like maybe eight feet tall? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plenty of heads above you? Yes. Mm-hmm. This man makes her look short. Oh, oh God. Hail. He stands at maybe 10 feet tall. Very simple robes and sashes around his rippling chest. You remember Maple's warning about a giant covered in tattoos, but the tattoos she was referring to are less tattoos and more like ancient runes carved into his heavily scarred flesh. Oh, God! Unlike the other cultists, he's not wearing any leather chest plating or shoulder pads or pauldrons or anything like that. But then again, why would he need to? I'm talking Jojo levels of buff, y'all. <laughs> oh, my Dio. <laughs> Everyone around him is in complete silence as he takes one lumbering step after another. They stand around him shaking as he comes up to the center here. You hear him clear his voice. <clears throat> this place we gather here. It is not by mere coincidence that this is the site of the cult's rebirth. You see the sail before me. And he gestures down to the sail, the banner that you guys were gathering in front of. This is the emblem of my people. Long ago, The king's folk arrived on ships like these. We freed these lands from chaos and heresy and brought about a new golden age through the strength of our will and the will of our king. That age is now gone, as are my people. It has been replaced by an age of complacency. The people of this land have grown soft and weak. (laughs) Sorry, I just, this is so serious that I like got nervous and my brain went, I really just wanted Maddie to just like lean to the cultist next to her and go, Sounds like a load of barnacles. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> She's not going to do that. You, honey. <laughs> that, was, that, was Ma- what, that was what Ma- Nervous Brain did. Maddie, he will fold us like a deck chair. Do not. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm not. I just had to say that. Was, that was I mind. think the cultist next to you can sense that you're about to do something stupid, and he turns to you and glares at you, not like in hate or anger, but just like, please. Shut your mouth. on the oxen. <laughs> Okay, anyway, please continue. Yes. Soft and weak. And in their weakness, I look amongst you all. Many of you have journeyed here with intentions of self-interest. You see these people as your golden opportunity. Am I right? What do you all say? Nothing. (laughs) Chris? Uh, not a thing. Velma? She's just staring up at this guy in awe and kind of fear. As you guys very cautiously reserve your answers to this question, you hear a couple of the cultists around you uh, just kind of murmur a half-hearted, a couple chuckles of malicious intent. Wrong! 
Here, we are not mere bandits, nor thieves. And if you have come here with such intentions, you have no place within our ranks. He looks out the gateway he came from into the outside world, you're assuming. You can't see past it. You can just see green fog. Ill tidings are coming. I've seen them before. And he turns back to you. And this land will fall, for they lack the strength of will. We are not bandits. We are not thieves. We are their awakening. Rude, but necessary. Our mere being encourages conflict. It encourages people to rise up against us. And this is good. We will remind these people of what conflict really is. Through conflict, they will be strengthened. Through strength, they will fight. And through fighting, they will survive. You can see Maxine applauding him and the other cultists uh, realizing she's clapping. Okay, time to clap, time to clap. There are those who question our ways, but our ways have proven true. They work even now, here in this room. An imposter walks among us. Oh, oh no. And everyone has the same reaction as you guys. They kind of, uh, but he doesn't change his face. It's remains stoic and calm. Thelma just is frozen still. You can just, she just feels the cold sweat kind of just piling on her, just falling down. She's just frozen in fear. Do not mistake me. I honor you. By facing us, you have shown initiative and courage. Please, step into the light. I knew you were going to say that. Let us recognize each other as true warriors. Uh. Are we going to do it? <laughs> so, <clears throat> I'm going to take each one of you into the whisper chat. Okay. Oh, no. One by one. Okay. No one talk about what you're going to do. I am going to question you okay. by oh. yourselves. Oh, no. Dry. <gasps> oh, no. Join me in the whisper chat. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like this, God. All right. I'll see you guys on the flip Be safe. Side. Be safe. <laughs> so, in the face of this realization, he looks out amongst you all. And he's waiting for someone to step forth. Oh, why? Okay. You don't know exactly who he is directing this to. Okay. You do know that amongst this crowd, there are at least you three who have impeded upon this gathering. Mm -hmm. Which of you three he's referring to, that's a matter of debate. Oh. So you could step up by yourself and try to take the blame or the recognition, so to speak, and protect your friends. Mm, okay. Uh, you would be the focus of attention that, in that regard. If they don't step up, it's just you. Okay. But if they all step up, it's going to be pretty obvious that you're all in this together. And if you don't step up... I, I, I would be safe now, wouldn't I? Mm. So, with that information, what does Chris do? Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm awake now! Oh my Wait, god, I'm awake! 
Wait, wait no. Chi-Chi, Chi-Chi. What if the imposter- We can't talk about it. No, no. I'm just saying, what if the imposter he's talking about isn't us? Oh. And it's it's the one that you came across, who we all had to guess who it was. Ooh, that's a possibility. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Oof. my gosh. Oh, my oh, gosh. This is so intense. I love it. Uh, <laughs> what a way to end the season. Ooh. I'm so excited. Ooh. Also, your drawing is hilarious. <laughs> I was like, I have to draw this. I have to visualize. What a load of barnacles. <laughs> oh, this is so intense. Ah! Oh, I'm so glad we're using the Whisper Chat more because we've only used it like three times. Uh-huh. And I love every time we use it. Yeah, same. Makes things interesting. <laughs> the, the, it, the weight is the worst part. I the weight. I just imagine like Maddie, uh. like, <laughs> like, uh slowly just like untying the bow on the back of her sash and i just feel like velma would just be like holding down her pigtail <laughs> and chris is just like dad sweats dad sweats <laughs> <laughs> they're taking terrifyingly long i know it hasn't been that long but it, it feels, feels like, like long etern- it's like an eternity ah! mm-hmm. ah! i feel like we're all gonna be like interrogated i'm not ready i'm not ready either i'm ready but i'm not And whoever and whoever goes next, the other person has to wait longer. I know it's the worst. <laughs> Chi Chi, I wish. Oh, you... this is terrible. Oh, oh I can't. I, like... I can't wait to. Uh, uh, I wonder if uh, Kay is gonna play any of this back of us, just like. Oh, I guarantee it. I guarantee he's gonna be flipping <laughs> through like... these, like, because he has to make sure that we didn't talk about whatever they're gonna be talking about in there or anything like that. So, yeah. like, oh, I know. Uh, That's why. I'm... Yeah, you're right. I hate That's this. I hate this. I hate this so much. <laughs> us, us looking. It's going to be all the SpongeBob jokes. Us looking at Kay. Evil. Speaking of which. <laughs> oh, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> Ariana. Oh, I'm sorry, Chi Chi. It's okay. Mm. Join me in the whisper chat, please. Hello. So. You standing by yourself amidst a sea of cultists. The cult master Oto has just invited the intruder to step forth. Now you have a choice here. Mm -hmm. You don't know who among you is he's talking about. Is it you? Is it Chris? Is it Velma? You don't know. Um, okay. Here's the choice you have. If you step forward, You're going to take the spotlight here Mm -hmm. and reveal yourself as an intruder. And if it's just you stepping forth, your friends are safe. Right. And it's just you. But you might be more cautious and you might see how this plays out and stay where you are. Right. And if you do, you're safe. But whoever does step out, if anyone does, may be a bit vulnerable. Knowing that information, what does Maddie do? Ah! I cannot. I can't. This is the worst. I can't. This is the worst. I'm not. I'm not okay. Ah! <laughs> I'm not okay ah! with any of this. See me. Ah! The weight. It's the weight that sucks. The weight oh, is what's it's, horrible. It's, it's that. The, it's the anticipation. Ugh. Yeah, it's it's that anxious feeling that you get when you're like about to take a test and it's a really important test and you're like, oh, it's fuck's like the fucking SAT. Oh, and then like you have to wait for your for like your test results and it's like days before you get them, so you don't don't friggin' know. Uh huh. Oh, I don't like this. this it's is... like a job interview. Oh no, I hate those. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I don't know how this is going to play out. I'm going to be absolutely Me real. Me fucking neither. <laughs> okay. Well, I think the main thing here should be not to die. Yeah, I think we're at that. We literally are at do or die, it sounds like. Uh, well, I mean, we could get out of this unscathed. We could lose some Pokemon. Or we could lose ourselves. I mean, what's so, what's so bad about re-rolling an entire character that you invested in? Uh, 
don't like this. I don't like oh. this at all. I don't like this at all. I don't like this at all. I'm, ah. I'm genuinely sorry for when he pulls you into the whisper chat. I am genuinely sorry. I want, I just wanted to get it over with at this point. Sorry. The waiting is the part that sucks the most. Fuck. <laughs> Oh, this I, is so scary! Why is this so scary? I thought ah. this was supposed to be a family-friendly session. This is not family-friendly. This friendly. is scary! What the fuck? What <laughs> went the from fuck? Fa- went from PG to rated M real fast, didn't we? <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> Chi-Chi. All right, let's get it over with. Join me in the whisper chat, please. Ah. <laughs> He's enjoying this too much. <laughs> So, amidst your own panic, you have heard Oto invite the intruder to step forth. Now, you don't know who he's talking to. It could be Maddie. It could be Chris. It could be you. I, you don't know for sure. I think Philo feels almost certain that it's her. I feel like in her mind, she feels like it is certain that it's her. Well, with that knowledge... You have a choice here. If you step forth, you will be the center of attention here, and you will out yourself as the intruder, potentially protecting your other friends from being exposed. (sighs) However, you could also hide yourself and stay where you are. Perhaps someone else will step forth and draw attention for you. Hmm. You would be safe, and they'd be vulnerable instead. Oh. In this dilemma, knowing what Velma knows, what does Velma do? How are you holding up? I'm good, actually. I, I'm good. How are you holding up? I am freaking the fuck out. <laughs> I I was freaking out when you first went in. I, I don't know. I feel oddly at peace right now, and I don't like that. How are you at peace when we are literally in a death trap? Because this is how I cope. <laughs> oh, hell. I just that don't think scary. about it. No, I just don't think about it. I just push the feelings down. It doesn't make them go away. I can just pretend they're not there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> sounds oh, like a load of barnacles. This sounds like a load of barnacles. Uh, yeah, no, trust me. It'll hit me as soon as Chi-Chi comes back. Uh, I think a, a lot of the anticipation was waiting to go in and talk to Kay. Yeah, I'm just excited. I like this story so much. It's. I'm very excited to see how this is all going to play out. But at the same time, I am horrifically scared of what's going to come out of this. I know, the fact that like we are fully navigating this story and making these decisions is bonkers. To be fair, maybe we might get a good enough role to where we can go. None of us are the cultists. You should let us go. Someone please get a legendary, please. You, a legendary really, role is all we need. You really think that this group is going to get a legendary? I mean, stranger things have happened, trademark. You're right. Listen, if I can get a six to make a costume to get us a deer. Anything is possible. God. The, guy, the dice gods seem to like it when we make rolls that don't deal with combat. Yeah. When it happens with combat, it just seems everything goes south. The dice gods, I guess, are pacifists. <sighs> Which is odd, considering we're playing Pokemon, a game about battling other people. Well, I mean, maybe we won't have to fight anybody. Oh, Dry. That's a lie. We're definitely going to fight. Dry, your Chris is showing. I know. I like to be overly optimistic. <laughs> As do I. Mm-hmm. But I've learned. I've learned by now. Mm-hmm. They're taking a long time. This is, I don't like, I don't like how long that's, that chat's taking. Mm-hmm. Well, only one thing to do now. Don't cry. Just gonna, hey Siri, <laughs> tell me a joke. I was washing the car with a friend until they said, can't you just use a sponge? What? what? That was a terrible joke. Here, wait, I'll ask my lady. Alexa, tell me a joke, please. Why did the zombie meditate after eating? I don't know why. He was experiencing mind, fullness. Did you know? I have ideas for funny gifts from Amazon. What? 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 <laughs> what? How is that? No, I'm okay. <laughs> hmm. 
I don't know. <laughs> that was a funny joke, right? Would you like to subscribe to Amazon to go and buy more wait, crap wait, that you might wait, not need? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I still don't even get the joke. I don't even get it. Why was the, it was like, why was the zombie doing something? Because he was experiencing mind fullness. Like, why wasn't he hungry anymore? Because he ate brains? Okay. Hey, Siri. I was going to say. What is the definition of the term mindfulness? Well, I know what mindfulness is. I don't. Okay. Oh, it's like when you're being mindful of something, it's like you're being thoughtful about it and like. Oh, like he was feeling full because he was having a lot of thoughts, but thoughts are equivalent to minds and minds. No, I know, but what was the what was the original joke? I don't even remember. I just remember the punchline. Uh, honestly, at this point, that's what I'm saying. So that's why I was like, I don't remember. Hold on, Alexa, tell me a really funny joke, please. What do you call it when bumblebees line up for a drink? What? Barbecuing. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> that was really good. That was good, but so bad. Wow. <laughs> well, hey, what up? We were asking our our computers to tell us jokes. I, uh, mm. I'd love to hear one. Well, my lady just said, what do you call it? The one that I was cackling at when you guys came in, because the other two were like, not good. No, no. Um, Was... What do you call it when bees are like waiting in line for a drink? <laughs> Barbecuing. <laughs> mm. That is a very good joke. <laughs> <laughs> I repeat, Kay. Evil! So, we step out of this bullet time moment. Let us recognize each other as true warriors. No one moves for a moment. And then, what does Chris do? In my brain, if this were me, I just blend in with the crowd because that seems like the smart thing to do. However, this being Chris, he understands there are kids here, so he's gonna he's gonna basically grit his teeth and he would walk out in the front because this isn't his first rodeo and probably not gonna be his last. Well, actually, it might be his last. So, yeah, I would say Chris, despite everything telling him not to, he he would just so those two wouldn't get found out and just in case things go completely south. What does Velma do? Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, this is just, oh. Oh, gosh. Oh. I feel like she is definitely trembling and on the verge of tears right now. That much I know for sure. All right. But I also think she knows... Hmm. Because the thing is that she does know that backup is coming. She hasn't been able to communicate it to the other two yet, but she does know for a fact that backup is coming. Mm-hmm. So I think in that case, she might feel like maybe this is her chance to be a distraction. Because if nothing else, she... Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> This is hard. Uh, uh, sorry. No. Think it out. Because this could also be a chance to buy more time. I think Velma will walk out in front. She'll be very obviously scared and terrified and trying to cover it up a lot. But she will walk up out in front to try and buy more time. So you have chosen to expose yourself. <sighs> yep. Yep. Okay. What does Maddie do? Well, here's the thing. Um, I, Ariana, think I know who he's referring to as the imposter, but Maddie does not. So... I think Maddie's going to stay in the crowd. Um, because I think at this point she would think that the smart thing to do is to see if anybody else 
who might be having doubts or something will kind of sabotage themselves. Um, they've come this far. I don't think she's just going to step out just because he tells her to. Hmm. So your choice is to abstain and see what happens. Yeah, I'm going to see what happens. Okay. Okay. Are you guys kidding me? Are you kidding me? Maddie, as you stay where you are, Chris and Velma walk up to the front of the pack. Why did you do that? Everyone else <laughs> takes a step back. You guys, we could have gotten away with it if it weren't for you meddling kids. Hey, well, hey. yes, we're here now. Oh my god, we're screwed. Oto looks down at you all. I see. There is indeed strength in numbers. Remove your hoods. Let me see you for who you are. Chris is trying to keep a calm composure, but as he's slowly taking off the hood, you can think it's obvious that his hand is shaking. Thelma waits for a minute, then very quickly she rips off her hood. Her face is covered in tears, but she has a serious glare on her face. Her face is very angry and very trying to look tough, but she is obviously terrified. Oh, no. Something happened in that whisper chat, and I don't like it. <laughs> I feel like we had very different whisper chats. <laughs> I feel like we were not on the same wavelength. No! <laughs> <laughs> Oto speaks again. To the two of you, welcome. I am Oto. What are your names? It's like there is a large lump in his throat. Like Chris hasn't felt this kind of like anxiousness or fear in his life since, you know, his Team Magma days. Christopher Gray. He nods. Welcome, Christopher Gray. And Oto looks at you, Velma. She takes a deep breath and just shouts it out with a clear kind of crack in her voice. Zelda, let him here! And trying to keep up a tough face. Welcome, Velma Vladimir. You honor us, child. You both have shown courage and initiative. And to honor these traits, I invite you to trial by combat. Oh my god! As our guests of honor, you may choose your opponent. Mm. <laughs> oh, this is hard. Chris is looking around. He knows in the back of his head, he's like, if I pick Maddie, we can make it look as though the fight is real lose and I'll go home, maybe, or I could actually take this seriously and try to figure out a way to get out of here, but there seems to be too many cult members to get out safely. Without saying anything, he points his finger to the cult master. He points it over to Maxine and he's looking at her. No. No. Not doing that. He puts his finger down and he says, I'm not fighting anyone. There's no point. What does Velma do? Because Velma knows that help is coming, I think in her mind, because she's so scared and nervous about what could happen next, she decides to at least... I think she decides to point and challenge Jaden, since at least she's fought him before. And there's at least, like, a chance of maybe of creating a match that can last a little longer. Or at least buy more time. Okay, I have a question. Yes? If Velma battles Jaden, can Maddie somehow sneak Lucille into Velma's hands? Well, let's resolve this first. Okay, because I want I want you to have a fire type, Gigi. So Oto looks down at Chris with a disappointed look. And that's when Velma says, I choose him. 
And she's pointing to Jaden. Jaden looks at you. <laughs> like mugging candy from a baby. And Oto raises a hand. You disappoint me, Christopher Gray. But to see such force of will in one so young, it warms my heart. The rest of you, clear to the sides. Give our two warriors some room. Chris get, looks at Velma and he's like, I trust you. Good luck. And he will move to the side. At this point, the swarm of cultists in the pit with you are crisscrossing and moving to their individual sides. Maddie, if you were wanting to sneak something, yep, now's the time. Now would be your chance. All right, so Maddie, knowing what she has to do, she knows that Jaden has the pokey. Um, she pretends that like she's still a cultist. She's like shoulders Velma, and manages to slip. Lucille into Velma's hand as she passes well, by. Well, first things first. Do you have to roll? Roll for sneaky. God. Oh. Well, you thought you were going to get away with that without a roll? Please, high roll, high roll, high roll, high roll. Okay, thank God. Oh, that's, no, that's good. I got a three. You bump into her, and you sneak her the Pokeball containing Lucille. And Velma, you feel a weight in your hands as you find one extra Pokeball that wasn't there before. And you look up and you see the bow on the back of a cultist <laughs> saunter away. As you slipped her the Pokeball containing Lucille, and everyone has made it to their sides of the field, the pit is now cleared. On one side near the door, we have Velma. On the other side, standing underneath the banner and under Cult Master Oto, and the rest of the peanut gallery up there, mm. is Jaden. Hold on a second. I think I remember that face. Didn't I bash you to the ground back in Port Gala? Wow. Jesus, it's a child. <laughs> Didn't me and my friends totally wreck you? Like I said, you may be done with old Jaden, but old Jaden ain't done with you. Enough talk. This will be a single battle format. Two Pokemon from each side. Begin! <laughs> Hello, it's me, Kvox, and it looks like you're stuck in the whisper chat with me. Which means you have a very important decision to make now. Are you enjoying the episode so far? Hi, it's a lie. It's not the whisper chat, it's the pause menu. And this is the first half of our season finale. Come next episode, that'll be a wrap for season one. I want to give a special thanks to Heather Feathersong for reprising her role as Maxine, one of the player characters from the playtest run. Links to her stuff down below. And if you are enjoying the episode, and I hope you are, uh, you can also support the show on Patreon, where you can get access to rewards like your name and the end credits of the YouTube release, access to behind-the-scenes bonus tidbits. Our latest bonus tidbit was a follow-up analysis of the second Battle Royale I ran, which was just a few weeks after my first Battle Royale, which was a hot mess, so let's see if I learned from my mistakes. Or if you support us on Patreon at the highest tier, uh, you get your name mentioned here in the pause menu. Just like Cami Cat, Cybernetic Pink Eye, Donkey Oto, Doodle Boy, Lizzie McPoof, Mr. Someone, and Trace. Or you could also support us on Twitter using the hashtag PKM and Legacy. Tweet about the show. Share some fan art, but just use the hashtag. You do that, and just like our patrons, we might use your name as one of our NPCs. And we're always looking for new names to add to the list. I think the only new name we introduced this episode would be Cult Master Oto, named after Donkey Oto on Patreon. No plugs or promo swaps this time around, uh, just a bit of an announcement. After the next episode, when season one has concluded, we'll be taking a bit of hiatus in terms of our release schedule. We still gotta build up a big enough buffer of recorded material for season two, so we don't have any sudden stops there. Now, there will still be content posted during the hiatus, just no main campaign stuff yet. 
And the Patreon might also be paused during that hiatus, but we haven't determined that for sure yet. Uh, We'll let you know. Of course, since we're still recording stuff for season two, again, I'm always looking for new names to add to the NPC name list. So please, don't wait to tweet about the show using the hashtag PKMNLegacy. We have to record that stuff well in advance. And I'm tired of fixing stuff in post. Please, give me your names. Okay, um, yeah, that's been enough for here. We still got a big chunker of an episode to get back to, so let's do that. Thanks again for supporting the show. Thanks for enjoying it. Back to the episode, unpause. All right, Spina Cat, let's go! And out comes this feline creature. Of moderate size, its fur and cactus tail covered in these sharp, rocky fragments like spikes. I was gonna say, he freaking evolved it. Mm. From the Pookmans. Oh, I should also give you control of Maddie's uh, Lucille, shouldn't I? Yes. No pressure, just in case you want to use it, I need a fire type. Velma, who do you send out? I send out Lucille. Make him quiver. <laughs> Roll for initiative. My one to your three, Lucille goes first. Is this the second or third evolution of... We don't know yet. Oh, okay. I just wanted to know. I mean, there is one <laughs> way to find out. Who wants to pull out their Pokedex? Yeah, somebody pull it out. I'll pull it out. You reduce the volume so you're not too much of a distraction. Spinacat, the spiky Pokemon, and the evolved form of Pokitty. This creature can go for weeks without food and water in the desert, simply living off the nutrients stored in its tail. It dries and hardens the tips of its fur into rocky spikes to fend off predators. What does Lucille do, Velma? She stays herself and then shells at the Lucille. All right, let's hit him with the Amber! Whoa. Oh. Oh. What? Uh, you see the fur bristling on its huge ears as it breathes fire into its hands and blasts it right at the Spina Cat. You got a seven for your attacking roll, but Spina Cat got a seven for its defending roll. So that's a block as Spina Cat whips its tail around and just bashes the fireball away. It blasts right into the wall, uh, right near where Maddie is. Some sand cascading down. See, I knew one of you punks were gonna come back with that. That's why I prepared. Spina Cat, use Rock Slide. That is an eight for the attacking roll and a negative one for the defending oh, roll. Are you kidding a me? A nine shift hit for that super effective rock type Jesus. attack. Jesus. Oh my God. I thought he would have been grass and poison. Spiny Cat slams its tail into the ground and suddenly <laughs> these rock spikes jut out from underneath the sand and you see Lucille is trying to duck and weave and dodge out of the way of each spike, but eventually she can't keep up with them all and suddenly from right underneath her, <laughs> Spikes her up into the air, and she lands on the ground with a crunchy thud. And she struggles to get back up onto her hooves. I guess good thing we don't actually believe in Nuzlocke right. (laughs) This is... What does Velma do? Also, if you guys want to interfere with this at all, uh, you can tell me and I will consider it. I'll think about it. Right now, Maddie is just like practically sitting on her hands, like against the wall. Chris won't do anything yet. He's still just watching. All right, Velma, what do you do? Velma looks back at Jaden. She's scared, but she's still trying to give off that confident front. So she sends like a wicked smile back at him and says, you think that's all we got? You got another thing coming. Let's use a little smoke screen, Lucille. Okay. Lucille rubs her paws together in a blistering speed and suddenly smoke spews out from around her and covers the majority of the field in smoke, essentially blinding all involved. But that may help. All right, if that's how you want to play, let's go for another rock slide. I'm going to roll for blind. If he hits this, I'm going to be so mad. Deep in the smog, we see Lucille holding very still, holding her breath in right now, in hopes that maybe the Spina Cat can't sense movement. And then the rocky spikes graze her fluff, but do not harm her. The move misses. Well, that's good. You said 
if we wanted to interfere, that we yep, could. I can, I'll say that you can do it at the end of the round, and technically this is it. So, what do you have in mind? I want to send out Victor. I want to do it in a way to where they can't see that it's... Well, the smoke screen is up, The right? smoke screen is up, which I think might help. But what I was going to have Chris do was, like, sneak his way around to sort of pretend like he wants to see what's happening, but the smoke screen isn't helping. So he's trying to move around and strategically gets next to Velma. Considering the type disadvantage at the moment to switch out Lucille with Victor, considering that ice is stronger than grass, if I remember correctly, pretty sure ice is stronger than grass. Is ice stronger than rock, dude? Uh Ice is, ground is weak to ice, but I think rock is stronger than ice. At any case, if you want to sneak over there, I will say I need a sneaky check. And I'll add a unspoken bonus to it because of the smoke screen, but I won't tell you what it is. Okay. Uh, dice gods, don't fail me now. Uh, sneaky. Wait. Oh. Okay, you rolled a negative one. If you're happy with that. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> there's only one way to change that, and you only have one fate point left. I'll use it. Would you like to add two or re-roll? I will add two, since I know Sneaky is not Chris's strongest suit, and I'll make that negative one just the one. Okay, plus your unspoken bonus. So, Chris, you managed to duck and weave your way through the crowd, oh. bumping a few shoulders here and there. Dang, I can't see anything. It's like, move, get out the way. Watch where uh, you're going. Oh, dude, come on. <clears throat> and you eventually make it out onto the other side. Velma, listen to me. All right, clearly, there is a disadvantage here. I need you to take this. And like he's trying to give her Victor from his Pokeball, just use Victor, please. Clearly this thing is stronger than Lucille and we don't really need you losing at the moment. Velma gives the nod to him and takes the Pokeball. <sighs> Good. And he's going to not leave, actually. He'll stay right there. I'm just going to roll for something real quick. Okay. All right. So, Velma, it is your turn. Luciole's still on the field, looking about at half health. I think she's going to call back Lucille and send out Victor. With the smoke screen still up, people can see a sudden flash as you switch out Pokemon. And they can hear <laughs> hidden beneath the fog. Let's go ahead and roll Mankey's initiative. All right. A fast boy. Come on, Victor. So at the top of the next round, he can move. Okay. Um, I got an idea. Let's try a little razor leaf. The spiny cat whips its tail around and summons a, a flurry of razor sharp leaves and rolling for blindness. They attack the wrong target player's choice. Velma, who would you like the razor leaf to hit instead? Can it boomerang back on itself? Yeah. That would count as confusion. Okay. Wait. <gasps> what if it hits Odo? <laughs> I, I do kind of want to see what would happen. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. Let's see what that Odo. Let's see how that goes. The Spina Cat is waving around in a uh, mad flurry, and everyone sees on the side where Jaden is, the leaves just whoosh, shoot out and head straight for Odo. Some of them are looking very panicked, Odo does not change his face at all, as eight for the attacking roll, five for the defending roll. He puts a hand out and grabs the leaves. You can see a squirt of blood as it slices against his skin. His expression does not change as he takes three points of damage. I want you to see this. Okay. So there's his health bar. He has full health now. Minus three. Boop. Oh, oh, great. No. Oh, Christ. He takes the leaves, crushes them in his hand, and lets it out. And just like a, a clump of bloody leaf bits just sprinkle to the ground beneath him. Anybody else hear boss music? Uh, Why is he so strong? Top of the order, Victor. I think Victor's going to go in with the ice punch. Okay, I need to roll for blindness All for right. him. Oh, yes. Hold on. I gotta roll for blindness. Oh no, shoot. Smoke screen is still up. Dice gods, please. Oh, thank God. Woo! They attack the intended target, so we'll use that roll. That's a seven for the attacking roll and a two for the defending roll for a neutral hit of five points of damage. 
So, Victor, <laughs> it's battle time. He leaps up into the air while he swings his frosty arms around until he hits something and fist hits fur <laughs> as he blasts him with an icy punch for five points of damage. Victor's so feral. I love it. Spina Cat's turn. Uh, it leaps around, ducks down in the ground with its tail high up in the air, and suddenly the tail, you hear a <laughs> as it shoots out pin missile at whatever it can. I'm going to roll for blind again. This hits too. They're close range. They're like right up against each other. It doesn't have that much hard of a time as it hits two times. But wait, how... Victor got a seven for the defending roll. Wow. <laughs> Victor said, not today. Wait, wait, wait. It says it hit It hit five times. No, 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 no. no. So look up. Oh, I see, I see. The attack hits what? two times. Yeah, that, that will give you a number between two and five times. Uh, and I just go down the list and see what hits. Gotcha. Two for the first hit, a seven for the second hit, but none of them surpass the seven for the defending roll against that not very effective bug type attack. At this point, the smoke clears, and the battlefield is unobscured now. And everyone sees Velma's second Pokemon, so she's chosen her two, and none of them are her own. <laughs> All right, top of the order, Victor's turn. Second first, same as the first. We're gonna go in with another ice punch. Okay, roll it. All right, now that the smoke is cleared, it can see pretty well, and it dodges out of the way just enough so it doesn't hit him full on, but that's still a three shift hit. There's a little gremlin. All right, now I'll hit him with a rock slide. And that is a four shift hit. Ow. The Mankey is very agile at climbing through trees and it translates with these rocks that are suddenly piercing out of the ground. It's just leaping all over the place. It gets hit and buffeted a few times, but only for four points of damage. Victor. I think this time we're gonna go with a helping hand. Uh. That's not really valid in this sort of situation. It's not, it doesn't work? Oh. All right, it has to be for a different Pokemon. Yeah, it has to target an ally. Ah, uh, okay. And it's just you. Dang it. In that case, I think we're gonna go with a Leer. Okay. The Minky glares around at the entire arena, its eyes furious with unyielding rage. And all valid enemy targets, Spina Cat, Jaden, all the cultists in this pit are affected by Leer and have their defenses lowered it. <laughs> you think that's gonna stop us? Hit him with a razor leaf! Minky dodges out of the way, only gets hit for three points of damage as the, as the leaves slice against his fur. Red's starting to mix with blue a bit, Aww. but he's still in fit fighting shape. You're doing good, Victor. Back to Victor. I don't know if I should do ice punch or karate chop. Oh, I mean, if it's using a rock type attack, I would say that it's grass and rock. Then again, it could also be grass and ground. I'm not entirely sure. I have a feeling it's grass and rock because it can harden itself. Well, Velma, there are no wrong answers in this situation, so there are. do what you think is best. All right, Victor, let's show his wheels are what we're made of. Hit with a karate chop! Whoa! Jesus! Oh, yeah. Now you're speaking the Menke's language. <laughs> and he leaps up in the air, brings the fist down, and with that leer bonus, that's a 10 for the attacking roll and a zero for the defending roll, a full 10 shift hit. Mm. As it slams <laughs> down, I hear <laughs> as the cat cries out. Poor thing. It's looking a bit dazed and stumbling around a bit. That ain't good. Spina Cat, don't be an idiot. Back up and use ingrain. We'll play the waiting game here. It leaps back. You see its claws extend from its legs and its spikes sort of point downward as it plants itself into the ground. And at the end of the round, it restores uh, three points of health. It's Victor's turn again. All right, we're gonna go in with that karate chop again. Right and true. Come on. Yes. That is an eight shift hit, thanks to that leer. So yeah, maybe planting itself in one solitary place wasn't such a good idea with a wild manky on the loose. <laughs> as it <laughs> as swings right at his little face. Eight points of damage. It is on its last leg. Oh, boy. Oh, well, you know what? That's what I wanted you to do. Nani? Spina Cat Razor Leaf. And at this point, you see the Spina Cat roots in ground 
uh, using its last breath, it suddenly surges with a natural power all its own. Overgrow is now in effect. <laughs> As... That is an 18 for the attacking roll and a 5 for the defending roll. <laughs> the attacking roll is doubled from a 9 to an 18 because of Overgrow's effect. So that is a 13 shift hit, which is exactly how much the Mankey had. <laughs> Victor is down. You know what? He did his best. We were so close. Bottom of the round, Spina Cat's ingrain gives it two more health. Still looking pretty weak. Well, what you waiting for? At this point, Velma is very angry. Maybe even more angry than she was scared before. Bring that incubator out. Let's have our little stars have another play date. Playtime's over. I gotta finish this. And I need you to roll for Incubro's initiative. Normally in this situation, Spina Cat would outspeed Lucille if it's a tie, but it is ingrained. It can't really move, so I'm gonna judge this as Lucille going first. And she sets out a big old stompy stomp. That is a six for the attacking roll. And with Lear, a negative one for the defending roll, a seven shift hit. How does Spina Cat go down? Whew. Lucille's just run around it, up and dodge it, and then comes in with a big old jump. Spiny Cat tries to duck out of the way, but it's rooted in. It can't move. Playtime's over! Hit him with the stop! And then Lucille just kind of throws down a right on smack dab in the middle of the face. All it can do is be Lucille's springboard as it crashes down on its face and curb stomps it in deeper into the sand where it is knocked out. You see Jaden recoil it back. His face is a bit panicked. Hey, uh, technically I'm not part of the Cold Nuzlocke yet, so I don't have to throw it away, right? I keep it, right? And he looks up. Maxine gives a gladiatory thumbs down. No. <laughs> you little bitch. Oh, well. <laughs> All right, that's it. Aerodactyl, we're gonna rip them to shreds. And Aerodactyl comes out onto the field and lets out a vicious. Oh. oh. And that's a seven for the initiative. So, Lord. Top of the order, the Aerodactyl swooping down with its talons outstretched, picks the Lucille up and drags her high up into the air for Sky Drop. Like they're 10, 20 feet above you right now. Lucille tries to fight her way out, but she can't do anything. So, being uninterrupted. Down comes a baby. Oh, that's a nine for the attacking roll, one for the defending roll, eight shift hit. Quick question. Answer. Are we allowed to use items? He did not say no, but that would be your turn. It's worth it, okay. Okay, what are you using? Good old Galette. Good old Galette on Lucille. That only does status effects. It doesn't heal damage. It doesn't heal damage? Uh, damage. we actually, hold on, wait. I'm pretty sure we still have like, Potions and super potions. We all have a potion, yeah. We all have a potion. I have a super potion. I'm right next to Velma. <laughs> Velma, you have ranch dressing soda and I have pop and petcha. <laughs> Wait, I thought Velma used that uh, ranch soda to hit that one cult nuzlocke on the head. <laughs> yeah, that broke into pieces. Ah, <laughs> uh, dang it. Oh, well, it's in there. But as I remember, you had two bottles, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I did, because my inventory still says I have one. Okay, yeah, well, we you have, have one. And I think a super potion. We've got three orange berries for me. I had those. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to give her item, you're going to have to make a sneaky check, and it's going to be a pretty high DC because the smoke screen's gone. I think I actually think because for the soda, it restores HP equal to eight of the trainer's heart rule. What does that mean? Let's take a look. For soda pop, for Pokemon, it's a it varies. It's eight HP plus. You roll for heart, and we add that. Mm -mm. That's a lot. Yeah, it could be quite a quite a good bit. I think I'll do it. Okay, I'm going to need you to make a heart roll then, Velma. Ah. I mean, that's still better than nothing. Yeah. yeah. How do you deliver the ranch soda to Lucille? Ooh. Not the ranch Ooh. soda. She reaches in, she tosses it to Lucille, and she says, Lucille, drink it. I know it's not the best flavor, but trust me on it. Drink it. <laughs> She cracks the bottle on the ground so it open up, and she glugs it. It restores her health, but she coughs it up. 
<laughs> and she gives you a very dirty look. <laughs> Ooh, that heart check did not make it taste any better. Top of the order, Aerodactyl. I think it is going to go for a oldie but a goodie with a rock slide. Nine shift hit. Oh. Ow. The soda pop saved your life, but you're back down to five HP. At this point, Velma, you take a look at Luciol. On her last leg, you can sense a fire is burning deep inside her. Lays is in effect. I'm tempted to use Boglet because isn't water super effective against Aerodactyl? Uh, Aerodactyl is a rock type. Rock and flying, I'm pretty sure, so water. Unless uh, y'all think that I should lay low, but I will say Maddie's pretty upset about this guy calling Velma the B word. I, th- there are ways. There are two ways this could go down. You could just you could interfere and just help out, and then yeah, just whatever happens happens. Because then now probably when Chris rocks in, if not, then he's probably gonna rock in once it's at the end of the turn again because things are not looking good. Might pop out diamond, but you could also you also have your fate point to do whatever you want. So oh, that's true. And as do you. I thought I used mine to wait. How many did I have again, God? Oh, you used that. I forgot to take it away. Thank you for reminding me. Ah. I will say this retroactively, because now that I'm considering it, you did accept a huge complication when, Velma, you outed yourself and took up the challenge. So I'm giving you one fate point. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, Velma. Chris, you, t- you outed yourself, but you didn't take the challenge, so you don't get a fate point. That is completely fair. I think I need to save the fate point because we have no idea what's coming up next. That's that's fair. Now then, Velma, Lucio's waiting for an order, blazes in effect. She's on her last leg. What do you do? Jeez. Uh, mm. oh, this is a tough choice because of... <laughs> <laughs> I had a terrible what? I, I, think- I had a terrible thought. Would you like to share with the class? I don't want this to actually happen. I really don't. But I just thought it'd be really not funny, but like morbidly funny if like as the Aerodactyl tried to attack Lucio this coming time, Maddie just screams out, Pecky Pecky and the <gasps> freaking- Pecky Pecky! <laughs> We can do that if you want. No, but then they would get murdered. Yeah, I don't want to hurt Pecky Pecky. But that was just an idea. I was like, can't she just summon Pecky Pecky at any given point in time? I'm pretty sure she can. Oh my gosh, Pecky Pecky. Sorry, just had a no, thought. No, no, it's, it's definitely <laughs> a thought. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought of that. I'll give you that. Like, I, I forgot I could summon Pecky Pecky on command. Velma, I'm going to need the answer. I think we're going to go with an ember. Go ahead and roll. All right. That's an 8 for the attacking roll, 8 for the defending roll. But because of Blaze, that is a 16 for the attacking roll. So it's an 8 shift hit. So Lucille is really fired up right now. Her fur is engulfed in flames. Her ears are made of fire right now. Her eyes are burning with a fiendish glare. as she lets out a huge jet of fire, blasting Aerodactyl straight on point. Even its rocky flesh can only do so much to withstand the blow. Eight points of damage. <sighs> nice try, but this is the end for you. Aerodactyl, finish her off. It goes down for a rock slide. And... Tater Tot, use Bubble Beam! And as the light emerges, a jet of bubbles hits the Aerodactyl right in the face. Not me. Knocking it off course just enough so that it doesn't actually hit. From the light emerges this <laughs> blue ape-like creature. What? Oh, Wait. Look who it is! It's Undertow! What? what? The cultist steps out onto the field and takes off her robe. I knew oh it! Oh my I god! It. I knew it! I what? Knew it. I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! You see a young girl with poofy hair, dark skin, a cap with three trainer cards sticking out from on top. Oh. 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 oh my god. Chris, your daughter is in the middle of this whole thing. You just see Chris. Wait, so who got it right? I did. I said, I I said the daughter. I, I did too. I know I said it. Yes, we all got god, it. It's I did so... say one of you got it. I didn't say all of you got it though, but that oh. includes one. Oh my gosh. Ain't I a stinker? <laughs> 